Today, I'm sharing a list of 100 weirdly specific things that you can declutter from your home right now without fear, guilt, or regret. And I bet that up until now, you might have felt like you were the only one who has trouble getting rid of these things or struggles with keeping them from creeping into your home. But I want you to know that you are not alone. And most people are probably weird like that too. It's just some of us are better at hiding it. So that's why today I wanted to pull back the curtain on the oddly specific clutter that I have in my home and reassure you that if I, as a minimalist that has been decluttering and simplifying for almost eight years now, have stuff like this around my home, it's in fact 100% normal to have these things and it's also 100% okay to let them go. So I want you to get up and declutter along with me today as we go through the oddly specific clutter in my home. So I decided to start in my lower level and then try to work my way up as much as possible. So for you, that might mean going down to your basement or if you have a lower level or your garage or maybe even out to the porch, we might go there as well. So those are kind of the zones that I'm working with here. And the reason we're starting here is because I need to tackle this hoard of boxes. Some people have a shopping addiction. I have a box addiction and it's just so hard for me to get rid of boxes because I always look at the boxes and I think, oh, that could be useful. I'm sure that I have something that I could use that for. But when we have too many boxes sitting around, they can take up a lot of space and they can also draw creepy critters to your home as well. So like I know when we used to live in New Jersey, we had a problem with centipedes coming into our lower level and eating the glue off of the boxes, which I didn't even know was a thing until then. And it's just also like really can weigh down a space. So I do have to save some boxes because we are looking to move and I wanted to keep certain boxes like the Ninja Blender box and the vacuum cleaner box. So I have some boxes that I want to keep. I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but for me, it's pretty soon after Christmas. So if you have a lot of boxes that you have sitting around your home from after Christmas and the holidays or things like plastic mailers or bubble wrap, those are some really easy things that you can let go and it'll clear out a lot of space all at once. So I'm gonna break down some of these boxes right now to get them out into the recycling. I forgot to mention another great reason to start with boxes is because then when you're going through the rest of your home, you can just take some of the boxes and use those to throw the things that you maybe want to put in the trash or that you want to send for donation into the boxes so you've already got those things ready for you and you're going to get rid of them anyway so why not put them to use another weird clutter category that people tend to forget about is your car but when your car starts to feel out of control and messy it can get really overwhelming and i know that my car used to be like much more messy than it is now but now i still do collect certain things in my car so for example right now we have some of these motion sickness glasses that i got for my boys i got two pairs we found out after not owning cars for many years and moving back to the USA and having to drive in cars, my boys get motion sick. But I bought these glasses to try to help. They don't really work for us, unfortunately. So they've just been kind of sitting around my car. So I'm going to try to either sell or give these away on a buy nothing group probably. And then something else that has been collecting in my car, unfortunately what works better than motion sickness glasses is candy so i have to give them mints so that they won't get sick in the car for car rides anything over 10 minutes we're getting iffy so i give them these lifesaver mints and so that just keeps collecting in the spaces in my car and so i've got a bunch of trash collecting in here so like i said take a look around your car and see if there's any easy like trash things that you can throw out or maybe things that you bought that you were hoping to help like maybe for you to go on the go or to help keep your car organized that maybe didn't work out so well and see if you can get rid of some of those Another oddly specific kind of clutter that you can get rid of is any holiday decor or lighting that happens to be on your porch or in your garage stored away or outside of your home. For example, we had some pumpkins on the porch for Halloween, but then after Halloween, I took the candles out of the pumpkins, meaning to bring them inside, but just never did. And they've gotten rained on, they've gotten snowed on. Obviously you can see that the weather is very, very cold here. So now these are not usable really for anything else. So this is something that I'm going to trash right now. And then some other kinds of specific clutter that you can watch out for in these areas are things like 
sporting gear, for example, bicycles or tricycles that your kids have outgrown, or maybe sports that you have tried but that you don't enjoy doing or no longer have the time for. You can also look for any old or broken furniture that's sitting around, maybe chairs where the legs have fallen off, or something that you've been meaning to refinish but haven't been able to get around to. If you have welcome mats that are maybe looking a little bit past their prime and are in need of replacing, those are something that you can get rid of. And also bags of donations or trash that you have sitting around that you've been meaning to donate or take to the recycling center, but that you haven't got around to doing. Schedule some time into your day and actually get those out of the home and to wherever they need to go next. And then finally in this area, the last thing that I was thinking of is anything that's damaged or moldy. So I think that you would be surprised how many people start decluttering and then they go down to their lower levels, their basements or their storage areas only to find that maybe water has gotten in or maybe it was a little bit humid and things have gotten a bit damp, which means usually that mold can creep in. I know that when we moved to China for a short amount of time, we put some things like baby things that we had been meaning to reuse when we had more children when we came back only to go down to our storage area and find out that even these things that were like plastic had gotten mold on the inside of like the plastic pieces and they all had to be thrown away. So if you find things that have gotten mildewy or moldy or damaged, let's say that maybe bugs crawled in and they chewed holes in some nice old wool clothes that you wanted to keep or some bookworms chewed on your pages of the books that you had in storage. It's time to let go of the guilt that you feel about that because your guilt isn't going to change what has happened and it's okay to let those things go. The next section we're going to declutter is our entryway and our entryway is a little bit awkward because it's kind of split into two levels where we have a coat closet on the lower level. That's where we keep some of our shoes and coats and scarves and hats. And then we also have a landing between the two levels where we keep more shoes. When we go out the front door, we want to have the shoes there. So like I said, it's a little bit awkward, but we're going to do the best we can. And we're going to start in the closet downstairs and we're going to look through coats, scarves, umbrellas, sunglasses, gloves, hats, and caps, and see if there's anything in those categories that we could get rid of. So right off the bat, something that I found is this pair of winter gloves that were my husband's, only they have gotten some holes in them and they're not exactly the best gloves for winter anyway because when you pick up snow, which he was building snowmen the other day with the boys and they were having a lot of fun, but gloves like this don't really work for the really, really cold weather and the snow in Chicago. So due to the fact that these have holes and they're not really practical for the area, I'm gonna be getting rid of these. And then also, we recently went to a restaurant that my husband used to frequent when he was a college student in our area that he had fond memories of. That's called Bob Chin's Crab House and they gave the boys free hats. And they kind of did it so fast that I didn't realize what they were doing at the time because if I had realized that they were giving these things to the boys, I probably would have said, no, thank you, we don't need that. But before I knew it, they had already gotten their hands on the hats and the crayons and whatever else and put them on their heads. So at that point, couldn't really refuse it, but we don't need to be walking around in promotional hats that advertise Bob Chin's Crab House, even though we do quite enjoy it. So I'm gonna get rid of these and these can go in donation because they're in perfectly good condition. Maybe somebody else would love them, who knows? So then now each of us has one baseball cap that we use. So this is now mine. It used to be my son's. He gave it to me because he got a new one. And then my youngest son, Didi, has this one. So now we have three hats and my husband doesn't wear hats. So that is what we're going to keep. Another thing that's great to declutter in these areas like the entryway or wherever you keep your shoes are worn out outgrown or duplicate shoes. So as a mom of two young boys, I get it. Like, it seems like we are always either wearing out or outgrowing the shoes. And so I have one pair right here that DD has outgrown. And unlike most of the shoes, it seems like he outgrew these so fast that they are still in good enough to condition to donate. So I'm going to donate these. But then if you have shoes that have like holes in them where the toe is completely worn down. We've had plenty of those too, especially DD seems to be a toe dragger. 
you can get rid of those. And when you have two pairs of almost the same shoes, but you find yourself always reaching for one pair versus the other, you can get rid of the duplicate and donate it, sell it, or give it away. Another thing to watch out for in these areas where you have entryways with flat surfaces are when you start collecting things like returns or exchanges that you're meaning to get out of the house, but then they just end up sitting there taking up space in your entryway or wherever it is that you keep them. I know, for example, recently I was blow drying my hair and I pulled a muscle in my back and it freaked me out because I was in so much pain. I had to go lay down on the bed and I told my husband, I'm going to have to have surgery. I'm going to have to have back surgery. I'm only 40 years old and I threw out my back blow drying my hair. It's so embarrassing. And my husband was trying to convince me that it was going to be okay. All I needed was to go get a Bengay patch for my back. I said, no, go get me a back brace. Go get me a back brace from Walgreens and I'm gonna wear that and see how it goes. So he got both for me and it turns out I did not need the back brace. All I needed was the pain patch for my back. So that was quickly resolved, but then I was left with this back brace that I didn't really need. And so I had kept the receipt, but it just kind of kept sitting around, sitting around, and I kept not getting around to returning it. And then finally the other day, I realized that it was approaching the 30 day window where I needed to make that return. So I headed with the boys to Walgreens and I did make that return and my back is better now. Um, I want you to know that. Although it, I am still very embarrassed about the fact that I threw out my back somehow blow drying my hair. But so if you're someone like me who tends to lay your returns and exchanges, kind of push them to the side and forget about them for a long time, now is your sign to go and take care of those. And if you find that the things have gotten past the return window and you're no longer able to return or exchange them, that's okay. If you haven't used it in that amount of time, that might be a sign that whatever that item was, it just didn't work for you. And you could either try to sell it or give it away on a buy nothing group or just donate it. But if it's been sitting there for 30 days, 60 days, and it's gotten past the return window without you using it, that's a pretty good sign that it's not something that you needed in your home and life. So as you're going through your coats, your accessories, your shoes and purses and things, don't forget to look inside of your purse to see if there's anything you can get rid of. Like for example, I had to get a new wallet because I found that moving back to the US for some reason I need to have more cards and more membership cards for discounts than when I had in Germany. So I had to get a new wallet to be able to fit it all. So now that I have this wallet, I no longer need this one because I don't need to have two wallets. And this is a good example of using the one in one out rule that helps maintain a balance and equilibrium in our homes to keep them clutter free. And I actually have a video on this topic that I will make sure to link down in the description box below for you with seven rules on how to own less and keep your home clutter free. That's gonna be really helpful. And one of those is the one in one out rule, like I said. Moving on, here is a list of things to declutter in your kitchen, pantry, or dining room area, depending on how your house is set up. Empty spice bottles, broken cups, mugs, or glasses, yucky or expired ingredients, tea or coffee that you don't like, placemats or tablecloths, refrigerator magnets, unused gadgets and gizmos, expired, stale, or rotten food, Excess medicine cups or syringes that you have lying around in your drawers. Spice or sauce packets that are left over from takeout or eating out. Extra water bottles. Empty jars. Unmatched containers or lids. What about dead batteries? I know I can't be the only one who has a bunch of these laying around in their drawers. Wow, my hair has gotten completely flat and it's all in my face, so we're gonna put that up and continue in a second. So if you've made it this far in the video, I'd love it if you would give this video a like and maybe consider going down and hitting the little red subscribe button and ringing the bell to turn on all notifications so that you can join me here each week for more reality-based minimalism if that's your jam and you don't mind someone who has super flat and staticky hair like me in the winter, who else can relate? <laughs> also, it's literally so dry here that like my 
finger skins is cracking and bleeding. Like I was taking the dishes out of the dishwasher this morning. I was like, why is there red on the dishes? Literally bleeding onto the clean dishes because my cracked hands are so dry. And so I've been trying to moisturize them like crazy, but they still look like lizard hands. So sorry if you see a close up of my lizard hands on video and or maybe some blood, I don't know. Next up, we have novelty mugs. And I feel like this is just something that people can collect in their kitchen cabinets here and there for whatever reason. And we got this particular mug from the Chris Kindle Market in Chicago when we went there to celebrate with our friends recently. And what's funny about it is that it's not even the 2023 mug, it's the 2022 mug. So they were repurposing last year's mug to this year. And when my husband bought me the Glühwein to drink, it just happened to come in this mug. Personally, I think that the memories that we have from going to the Chris Kindle Market are enough, and we go to the Chris Kindle Market in Germany sometimes when we go visit for the holidays, so I don't need this mug to remind me of that, so I'm gonna go ahead and donate this. And then another thing you might want to declutter are things like pretty bottles, like along with empty boxes, I always have a hard time getting rid of pretty bottles because I look at them and I just think I could do something with that. Like I could make something really cool out of that. Maybe I could put flowers in it or I could, you know, upcycle it into something else. But the thing about it is I know myself now well enough to know that I just keep these things around and then never get around to doing them. So if I kind of future map and I try to think out if I had the free time where I wanted to tackle some kind of project or do something, would I sit down and do a craft with pretty bottles or would I want to do something else? And the answer for me is I would want to do something else. I would want to catch up with listening to an audiobook, or maybe watch a movie with my husband, or maybe go and exercise. And I wouldn't want to spend my time decorating or doing something with this bottle. Now, if you have something specific that you can immediately take this bottle and go make something out of it or put it to use somewhere where you're like, this is the perfect thing, you can go and do that. But as for me right now, I don't have a specific use for this bottle. And so I'm going to let it go even though it is really, really a beautiful green. I mean, look at this, it's so pretty. Now the next one is optional and that is to declutter your cake stands. But if you like baking, you might say, I can't get rid of my cake stands. But for me, I found that I didn't bake a lot and I discovered a great solution that allows me to still make the occasional cake and not have it dry out without having to own a, a cake stand. So what I do is I have this glass plate that's very large and I use this a lot of times when I'm chopping vegetables to make like, I have a pot of chili, leftover chili on the stove from last night. I had like the peppers and the onions and tomatoes and everything out here, but I can also use it for cakes. So then when I make a cake, I put the cake on this plate. And then what I do is I have a really big glass bowl. And what I'll do is I'll turn it upside down and I'll put it over the cake so that it's nicely covered. But that doesn't mean that I have to own a separate cake stand for that thing. But I have two very functional pieces, a glass platter, and a mixing bowl that I use all the time that can serve as a cake stand instead. I thought that this was a really clever hack that helps me not only own less, but also get more use out of the things that I already own and love using in my kitchen. And I'm not saying that it's right for everyone, but for me, I really like that I was able to kind of repurpose the things that I already have to serve a different function without having to go out and buy a piece for that specific thing, such as a cake stand. And speaking of which, the next thing you can declutter from your kitchen is having too many duplicates. And that can be things like approximate duplicates, like in my case where I said I don't need to own a cake stand because I figured out that hack where I can use a plate and a bowl instead. Or it could be you end up with exact duplicates. Like for example, when we moved into this townhouse, I realized that we didn't have a broiler pan. We have a below oven broiler, which I've never had before. And it usually is supposed to come with a broiler pan, but it didn't have one. So I went out and I bought a broiler pan and then we realized that our oven wasn't even working. So we had to call maintenance to come and take a look at it. 
And at that point, the maintenance man came and he said, oh, this is supposed to have a broiler pan. Why doesn't yours have a broiler pan? So then he went and he brought the broiler pan that was supposed to go with it. So now we have two broiler pans. Now we're in a little bit of a unique situation because this is a rental. And so this broiler pan will be staying in the rental and this is the one that we will be keeping. But I'm sure that there's plenty of cases where you have probably found yourself ending up owning duplicate items in the kitchen and you don't necessarily need to own all of those duplicates because they just end up taking up extra space and requiring extra storage and care and maintenance. So if you find yourself in a position where you own too many duplicates or similar items, like say you have too many of the same size pot, or too many of the same size pan, or maybe you wore out one pan and it got scratched and so you bought a new pan to replace it but you never got rid of that old pan, or maybe you upgraded from plastic teaspoons and measuring cups to metal ones. Whatever the case, if you find that you have multiple sets of similar items and you're reaching for one of those items over and over again while neglecting the other, consider getting rid of the duplicate item and keeping the one that you like and use the most. Another item that you might want to declutter is cookware or appliances that just aren't quite the right size. So what I mean by that is for example, when we moved into this furnished rental, they have this ridiculously small pan. And I was just looking at this thinking, there's no way I can cook the things that I want to cook on that pan, like pizza or roasted vegetables. It's just simply not practical for our family of four. So for our family size, this is much, much more practical. And I would rather keep this and declutter that other one. Now I'm not going to declutter it because it doesn't belong to us, it belongs in this kitchen, but I literally never use that one and instead always reach for this pan size. And then in terms of appliances, one example that I have for you for this is a waffle maker. So back in Germany, we owned a waffle maker that made only one single waffle at a time. It was very cute, but very inefficient when it came to making waffles for the entire family because everyone else would be at the table enjoying their waffles. And meanwhile, I'm in there trying to make one single waffle at a time. So when we moved to the USA, I said, I'm going to find a waffle maker that can make more waffles. And what I found is this four waffle iron that makes four waffles at a time. And I love it. Not only are the waffles amazing and so thick and fluffy, but then also I'm able to make enough waffles that we can all sit down and enjoy some waffles at once. And then I can come back and finish the rest of the batch later so that we can have frozen waffles to make afterwards. So this was a much, much smarter purchase compared to that really tiny single waffle iron that we had back in Germany. So I will definitely be getting rid of that when we go back to Germany the next time. Time. But that's just one example of how you want to have items in your kitchen that are practical for you and your family. Because if it's not practical, then you're not going to be reaching for it and you're not going to use it. And then what's the point of keeping it? Which also kind of leads me to number 40 on this list, which is to declutter things that you just don't like using for whatever reason. Maybe it's like my waffle iron and the size wasn't practical for you or your current family size or the life that you're leading. Or it could be something that you just hate using because it takes way too much time to clean. I know I had a bunt cake pan in the past that I just hated using because it was so hard to clean the inside. It was a special edition bunk cake pan that I thrifted and I was so proud of it. But whenever I used it, it was so miserable because I almost had to get in with a Q-tip to get the little inner parts of the bunk cake pan clean. So once I realized how hard it was to clean and how miserable it made me to have to clean that thing, I realized that it just wasn't worth it to continue owning that thing. And so maybe look around your kitchen and ask yourself, are there appliances or utensils or tools or pots or pans or anything that you just don't enjoy using and you reach for something else? And in that case, those items could be let go. Next up, we have paper clutter. And you'll have to forgive me because I recorded some footage but forgot to turn on the microphone for that section. So here is the list of items that I had mentioned. Old receipts. Instruction manuals. 
magazines and catalogs, expired cards or coupons, school forms and calendars, business cards, and junk mail. And then another thing that you can get rid of in this area are expired or excess membership cards. Like for example, we got some new 2024 healthcare cards. So I need to cut up these and get rid of these that are the cards from last year. So that's something I need to get rid of. And then when I signed up to be a member of the local library and I joined Goodwill and I got a membership card there because my old one apparently expired from when I was in New Jersey, they gave me not only full size cards, but then they also gave me these smaller keychain size membership cards that I could use or give to someone else to use. But the thing is my husband doesn't really use these. If he goes to the library and takes the boys, he'll always take my full size card. He doesn't want to put one of these on his keychain. And my boys certainly aren't going to use them. I'm not going to use them because I always pull out my full size card. So I could go ahead and get rid of these. And then if you have last year's calendars laying around or even further back than last year, that's something that you could consider getting rid of and recycling or any little notes or to-do lists or post-its that you've written to yourself that you have lying around and cluttering up your space that have irrelevant material on them. You can also toss those or recycle them when appropriate. Moving on into the living spaces, such as living rooms or family rooms, some of the things that you can look to decluttering in these areas include things like too much furniture, frumpy throw pillows or cushions that have lost their shape, excess or worn out blankets, CDs, DVDs, or video games, games that have missing pieces, games that you don't play, candles or air fresheners, vases or bowls, artwork that you don't like or that makes your room feel too busy, dead plants or flowers, half finished or unread books, knickknacks and figurines, broken or duplicate electronics, unfinished crafts or hobbies, and unused exercise equipment. Heading upstairs, the next area that we're going to declutter is my bedroom and wardrobe. And one of the first things that I like to tackle in the bedroom are the flat surfaces. And if you look around our bedroom, you can see that there's a lot of flat surfaces in this room. We've got two nightstands, we've got one long dresser, and we've got a tall dresser. And then most of us know that the bed can also be a flat surface too, right? Where it just begins to collect a lot of clothes on top of it. And the reason I like starting with flat surfaces is because if we clear off the flat surfaces, that's going to get that visual clutter out of the way and even if we're not able to get directly into the dressers or into the wardrobes at least we've cleared off the stuff that's most visible in the bedroom once you're done with clearing the flat surface clutter then you can get inside of the drawers and get rid of things like holy socks underwear that are stained or have gotten holes worn into them and unrepaired clothing projects that you've had sitting around meaning to fix for way too long but just never got around to doing. Another oddly specific clutter item that you might have in your wardrobe or in your drawers are bathing suits that are uncomfortable, whether it's because they've gotten so worn out that the elastic has come loose and they no longer stay snug on your body, or maybe it's got bits of underwire poking out that poke you in the boobs. In my case, the story is that this bathing suit is just way too tight. So what happened is we moved back to an area where they have a swimming pool that we could join. So we joined the local swim club and I was excited because that meant that I could dig out my competitive swimsuit that I hadn't worn for quite a while, which is a size eight slash 34, okay? But when I tried to put on this swimsuit, I realized that I had gained a significant amount of weight and it was not fitting me well anymore. So I actually had to order the exact same swimsuit because I love the swimsuit just in a bigger size and now I've sized up to a size 1238. Here's the tag for proof. So this is the one that fits me. 
and this is the one that doesn't. So I'm gonna get rid of the smaller one and keep the bigger one because I, even if I lose a significant amount of weight, I don't see myself fitting into this piece anymore. Heading into my closet, another item to watch out for is duplicate clothing and accessories. So this could be something like you went shopping and you got a pair of jeans, only to realize when you got home that you had another pair of jeans almost in the exact same color, maybe the fit was the same, and over time you find yourself always reaching for one pair over the other so in that case you might want to let go of the pair that you don't reach for or maybe you find yourself with way too many pairs of similar shoe styles like too many high heels too many boots too many sandals or wedges or whatever in our case like i said we recently joined a swim club and we're trying to get the boys onto the swim team and come to find out that the goggles that they had are more for like recreational swimming versus competitive swimming so they needed goggles that were a little bit better. So I bought them some new goggles, also Speedo, because that's always what I used. But that means that I can then get rid of these goggles because now we have duplicates and the other goggles are much better quality. And these tend to leak and don't fit so well on their faces. I even had to tie my oldest son's because it kept coming loose like it wasn't sticking to his head and anchoring the right way. So I even, you can see, I tied a little knot here. So now that we've got them a better pair of goggles, I'm going to be able to declutter these duplicates and get them out of the way. Next up on this list, we have clothes that don't fit and clothes that you have to fidget with too much when you wear them. And unfortunately, this pair of beige pants that I thrifted happens to fit into both categories. So I had purchased these pants because I wanted a pair of little summer culotte style pants to stay cool in the summer and look cute. I've been seeing a lot of people wearing this length and I was interested to try it myself. But I found that the waistband actually, once I got it home, I realized that there's not elastic or anything really supportive in the front of the band. And so it tends to slouch down in front of my gut. Another item you can declutter is clothes that you haven't worn for a long time, like say six months to one year. I usually say that if I haven't worn something one full year from one season to the next, when I start decluttering, I'll start with the previous season. And when I look at that season and I know, hey, I didn't wear that this past summer and I didn't wear it the summer before, then that's probably a good sign that I can get rid of that item. I talk more about this and share some good hacks in this video that I can link up here for you about how to reset your wardrobe. And then once you've gone through your bedroom, your wardrobe, and you've decluttered a significant amount, you might find that you have some extra clothing hangers to get rid of. And if you have a lot of clothes hangers hanging around inside of your closet, that can kind of encourage you to start buying more clothes to fill up those hangers. It's okay to have a few extra hangers in your closet because most of us aren't trying to stick to a strict number of items that we can own. Even when we own capsule wardrobes, usually there's some kind of, you know, boundary between in and out where it's you know, might fluctuate one way or the other. So it's okay to have a couple, but if you're having like 50 or 100 extra clothing hangers, maybe it's time to get rid of some of the excess. The next zone we're going to go through is the bathroom and linens. And as you can see, my bathroom isn't really set up for decluttering and filming it, but I'm gonna do the best that I can and we're gonna go through this zone quickly. I don't know why, but I find that this is an area where I can collect a lot of weird stuff, maybe because it's hidden underneath the bathroom cabinets and I don't have to look at it and therefore it's easy to shove things out of the way and just forget about them. But I into the bathroom cabinet. Something that I know that I can get rid of right away is extra contacts cases. And it seems like I think every time I go to get some new eye solution for my contacts in the box is included one of these things. But I already have one that I like and have been using for many years, so I don't need this one. And then something else you can look for is expired or dried out products. So like 
this mascara has gotten dried out and I already replaced it, but for whatever reason, hadn't thrown away this one, or maybe something like nail polish that you use that's kind of gotten dried out, or maybe your makeup has gotten cakey, like the foundation or something. So look for these products that are, say, expired or too dried out or goopy or whatever to use. Get rid of those. Another oddly specific clutter item that I tend to accumulate are stretched out hair ties. And I will move to a different hair tie, but yet not get rid of the one that's gotten stretched out. So as you can see, when I say stretched out, what I mean is this one has gotten kind of pulled where this part no longer has elastic. So I am going to throw this away, but I picked up a great tip from some of my friends, which is whenever you throw something like this away, make sure to cut it just in case it ends up in the ocean or something, or, you know, a little birdie sticks their head through, you know, they're not going to get tangled up in it. So now this is much less dangerous than just having it in a circle. So always cut your hair ties before discarding them. Another thing that we tend to collect a lot of is empty product bottles. And as I'm looking in my cabinet, just in our little tooth care toothpaste area already, I see that we have some toothpaste that has gotten emptied out, but we just never threw away. This is actually from my husband and myself. And then my sons had a dentist come to their school and do a presentation and he gave everyone little grab bags of dental products and they got a cute little thing of mouthwash. They've already used up their mouthwash, but for whatever reason have left this sitting in the cabinet. This is something else we could get rid of. So right there, just in this one little container, I was already able to find two of those. I'm sure I probably have more in here and I bet you do too. Duplicates can also be an issue in the bathroom. So for example, when we moved here, I needed a new hairbrush. So my husband, while he was out, I said, get me a round hairbrush so that I can, when I dry my hair, I can curl it under. But the one that he got me is the incorrect size. And also it's not metal. Like I like to have a little bit of metal because it's hard for my hair to hold volume and curl. So I like that metal heats up and maybe it can get warmer and hold the curl a little bit more. So so he got me this one, but I like this one better because the bristles tend to cling to my fine hair better. So when I'm doing my hair, it tends to not, you know, it holds better and brushes better. And then also it's got metal here, so it heats up properly. And also the size is better. So this one is a little bit thicker compared to this one. This is more the correct size. This is a little bit too small. It's probably for people with more like shorter hair, pixie hairstyles. So now I've got duplicates. I love this one. Never use this one so I can get rid of this. Another thing that you can get rid of if you tend to collect too many sample size products. So like, let's say you go and you try something and they give you a sample or you go to a, a hotel and they give you a sample and you end up with a big box of sample products like we have. Now I'm not gonna get rid of this because my husband actually uses it when he travels, but if you find yourself with too many small sample size products that you know you're not going to use, a great place that you can get rid of them is women's shelters. So a lot of times you can call and ask if the women's shelter in your area accepts donations of things like toiletries with shampoos and conditioners and soaps. So if you have a lot of these extras, you can see if you can get rid of those there and help someone in return. Another thing you can declutter is products that disappoint you. And I know we hate creating waste. We want to be frugal. We don't want to feel like we're wasting money or creating too much trash. But when you hate using a product, there's no reason to keep it sitting around in your bathroom cabinet. So for example, this is the deodorant that I used to use in Germany, but they changed the formula. And I realized immediately when I bought the new formula that it just wasn't going to work for me. It makes my armpits feel wet and very uncomfortable. And I didn't have that really satisfying dry feeling, but for, months and months I've been hang letting this hang around underneath, not getting rid of it, when I'd already replaced it with my old favorite uh, deodorant from the USA brand, which is Secret. So I like Secret deodorant. So I'd already gotten a new one, but for whatever reason, hadn't gotten rid of this. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this go. 
So if you're like me and you have products sitting around on your countertops or in your cabinets and you have trouble getting rid of them because you feel guilty, whether it's for money wasted or because you don't want to create waste, just remember the money was wasted when you bought the product, not when you get rid of it. And also that packaging is going to continue to exist no matter if it's sitting in your cabinet or if you send it off to the trash or recycling or wherever. So isn't it better to at least get it out of your house? Now, this is a really weird one, but I wonder how many of you have something like this. So I have to wear night guards at night because I tend to grind my teeth, my husband does too. And so both of us have night guards and we got a new one while we were in Germany. But this night guard is much lower quality than the one that we have previously. I had to get it done twice because the first one broke because it's so flimsy and I can't wear this one actually because when I did I found that it was the edges were sh so sharp it was like cutting into my gums it was really uncomfortable to sleep in and therefore I wasn't using it so I went back to my old night guard but I just kept this one sitting around in my cabinet because I feel weird about throwing away something that's literally like my teeth imprints on it. I have just kept it sitting around, like I said. But I even asked the dentist, I said, is there a good way to recycle old night guards or unwanted night guards? And she said, no, there's not really a way. Just go ahead and throw it in the trash. And it's funny, I'm actually getting rid of the newer one because I can't stand it and keeping the older one. So think about if you have any outdated, worn out or old medical accessories like this, like maybe night guards or maybe old glasses that are not in the correct prescription or glasses cases that you don't need anymore and you've just been collecting a lot of extras. Those are another weird clutter item that can tend to accumulate and that it feels really, really satisfying when you let go of them. And the final two items in this zone are too many or worn out towels and linens. So if you find that you have purchased new towels or linens because the old ones got wore out but you haven't gotten around to getting rid of them yet, now might be the time to let them go. Or if you find that you just have way too many and you are constantly doing laundry because you just have so much that you're cycling through them all, you really don't need to own that many towels and linens to get by. I'd say at maximum two sets, which is what we have for our family. So that even if there's a spill or an accident, at least you have one backup set, but you don't really need to keep much inventory beyond that. And the final category that I want to take you through are the kids' toys, games, and clothing. And even though I'm talking about kids' clothes first, I actually want to bring you into my bedroom because as some of their things have been wearing out, I've been stuffing them into my dresser drawer because I, like I said, I'm still figuring out systems in this new place that we're in. So I had plenty of space in my dresser drawer. So that's kind of been the designated drop zone for worn out clothing. So I'm gonna get in here and look for things like pants with holes in them that have been worn out or shirts that have gotten worn out or clothes that they've outgrown. And I'm going to separate those between ones that need to be donated and ones that need to be sent out to the trash or for textile recycling. And then I also want to go through the dresser and see if there's any worn out or unmatched socks. And I don't need to go in Kuku's room, but I know Didi has quite a few in here. So let's go through and see if we can find any socks that need to be tossed out. I am so sorry. Someone is shoveling the sidewalk right outside the window. So if you hear like some crazy scraping noise in the background, that's what it is. It's pretty loud. So coming down here, this is where most of my kids' toys are because they don't tend to like to play upstairs in their bedrooms. They tend to like to play down here where they can spread out more. And so we've kind of made a designated toy box in the TV console. But so when I go through here, some of the things that I'm looking for in this area, one thing that I know that's been laying around is Lego boxes. So I like to keep it so that they can look at the instructions for that but then they've already disassembled it. They don't tend to keep them assembled once they build them, then they tend to take them apart and make other things with them. And so I know that they are done playing with this. And if we wanted to look up the instructions, we probably could do that online, 
So now at this point, I can probably go ahead and recycle these Lego boxes. And then some other things that you can look out for are toys that are broken or toys that they have outgrown. So for example, this is a squishy ball that one of my sons won at a birthday party that he went to, but it's gotten a hole in it and it started leaking. So he said, mama, we need to throw this away, it's leaking. So that's an example of a broken toy and then like toys they've outgrown. This is actually not even our toy. This is a toy that we found in the couch. It's probably several years old. Who knows how long it's been there because this couch has been in this furnished rental and people just move in and out of here so fast. So they are not interested in playing toys like this. Like this is a Paw Patrol puppy and it's the girl puppy. They tend to be more of like Hot Wheels guys. So in that case, we would choose keeping Hot Wheels and getting rid of something like this. You can also look for things like cheap grab bag toys, like from birthday parties or school prizes. I know this is one. And then the boys have gotten several miniature Rubik's cubes. Like how many tiny Rubik's cubes does one child need, right? or something like stickers that they have been collecting but then never get around to using. Some kids are sticker kids, my kids are not sticker kids. They tend to just float around the house and take up space. So that's another thing we can get rid of. Do your kids have a bajillion erasers when what they really need is just one or two good erasers? Like these are also kind of another grab bag thing. So this is something else that we could get rid of. Or things like ripped Pokemon cards. Maybe they don't want to get rid of all of their Pokemon cards, but maybe the ones that have gotten torn or bent or are not in such good condition. Maybe we could get rid of those. And what about like card games or games with missing pieces? Like I know for a fact that this Go Fish card game doesn't have all of the cards because my kids have told me, well, then the cards just get thrown around and end up all over the place and make a mess. And so that's something that we could recycle instead. Or maybe they have games that they don't play with like board games or card games. Those are something else that you could get rid of. And you can also check and see if you have any duplicate toys or games. Like for example, I had gotten this small chess set because I thought that this would be really great for when we were traveling to pull out and be able to play chess on the airplane or the train. But it turns out that this doesn't lay flat and since it's not magnetized, like things can tend to slide around. So I actually ended up getting a different chess set instead and this chess set not only came with chess, but also checkers and it's magnetized. So this is much more practical for us. And then finally, things like old workbooks, old coloring books, old homework from school or paperwork that they don't need anymore that could be trashed or recycled because this stuff can really tend to pile up and take up a lot of space. And unless it's something that's really, really special that represents a milestone that is something that's new for your child or that you want to remember, you don't need to keep it. You want to keep the most special things. You don't need to keep everything. I hope you enjoyed this list of 100 weirdly specific things to declutter in your home. And I'd love to know if I missed anything that maybe you have in your home that I didn't mention in this video, make sure to drop me a comment down below and let me know. And if you're ready for more decluttering, you can go check out this video or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.